Hi guys, it's me again, back at it again with another Bible reading for you. Uh, this time I will be reading from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, which is entitled, Spiritual Gifts. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the spiritual abilities that the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshipping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. One body with many parts. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the one body of Christ. So it is with the one body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, then that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if the whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But if our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The ear can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The hand can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem the weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. While the most honorable parts do not require the special, tr special care. So God has put the body together. Such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles those who have the gifts of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages, 
Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gift. But now let me show you a way of life that is best for all. Love is the greatest. Chapter 13 If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I give everything I have to the poor and even sacrifice my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have nothing gained. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only a part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now when we see things imperfectly, now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in the mirror. But then we will see everything in perfect clarity. <clears throat> All I know now is partial and incomplete, but then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely now. Three things will last forever faith, love, and hope, and the greatest of these is love. That's it for tonight's reading session. I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Um, bye, and have a great night. Or if you're already sleeping already, then good night. <laughs>